Ready Player One is a huge book and soon to be a huge Steven Spielberg movie. Let's talk about the technologies that are inside Ready Player One and ask ourselves, are these real? Can I buy these now? Let's talk about that. I don't know of any other book that was recommended to me by my friends as much as Ready Player One. So I got the audio edition of Ready Player One. This is my personal copy. And I listened to it and loved it. Probably my most favorite book of all time. But that's not what's important. What's important is the movie is coming out and it's showcasing all these really cool technologies. And let's talk about each individual technology and find out, can we get it now? Can we buy it now? And or is it gonna change our world? So the number one technology in Ready Player One is definitely the VR environment. So this is my personal HTC Vive. You can buy this. I'll leave a link down below as to how to buy an HTC Vive. You gotta have a massive computer to run it, but it's fantastic. You put this on, you put this on and you're in a completely different world. These controllers allow you to see where your hands are and allows you to interact with the world. You can reach out and touch a shark or punch a shark in the nose. You can sculpt clay and paint in midair. It's the, one of the most fantastic things in the world. So that's VR. Can you buy it now? Yes. Is it going to change the world? Yes. So let's talk about the next technology within Ready Player One, the Oasis. The Oasis is just the VR world that is embedded into these VR goggles. So if you live in a shack and you want to live in a mansion, you can download a mansion into your VR goggles and live out your day in that mansion. So are there VR worlds out there right now? Well, sort of. Not to the place where we're talking about the Oasis, where it's fully interactive and multi-worlds and all that stuff. It's not at that level. However, there's cheap $2 games out there that allow you to interact with people across the world. They're in a VR environment. You're in a VR environment and you're playing ping pong with each other. Is that a VR world? Sort of. Is it gonna catch on? Yes. So the next technology I want to talk about is the haptic gloves and the haptic suit. So haptic glove is when you reach out and touch this part and it has rigid rough marks on it. You'll have a glove that actually gives you the response of roughness and sharp corners while you're touching an object in virtual reality and you're not actually touching an object in real life. So the gloves themselves will have little, little pulsations and little triggers on each of your fingers to make you feel like you have something sharp in your hands or something heavy in your hands and it's pulling your hands down. So that's what a haptic glove is. Do we have this in real life? The answer is yes. We even have a glove that allows you to put your hand under falling water and you feel little sprinkles of water across your palm and across your fingertips. That's an amazing technology and it's going to allow you to get deeper and deeper into this VR world. We already have a haptic vest where it uses subwoofers to pound on your body whenever you get shot in a virtual reality world or you get, you get impacted by punches. Those speakers give you a feel that something is pounding on your chest. Whether it be bullets or whether it be punches, it makes you feel like you're part of the action. So the next technology I wanna talk about is a haptic chair or a haptic car, if you will, where you actually see it in the trailer for Ready Player One, where the character IOI gets in a setup where it feels and operates like a car while you're on a VR goggle. Do we have that technology now? Yes. Can we, I buy it tomorrow on the shelf? 
sort of. The technology right now for a haptic car is really expensive, so you don't really see it available for home use, but you can actually see it in an arcade or in a amusement park. So with the VR goggles on your head, you get put into a chair that tips forward for when you're braking, tips back when you're accelerating from side to side, depending on if you're banking or if you're driving around a corner, it will throw you into the corner. That's an amazing technology. It's out there now. If you had enough money, you could actually find a way to get it. It's amazing. In combination with the VR goggles, you're gonna feel like you're in a Formula One car without no doubt. The last technology and the most, the last technology and the most important technology to talk about is the addiction to VR. Now there's a lot of debate on whether or not we're going to live in this VR world 24 seven. And there's a lot of debate on whether or not it, this is even gonna kick off and, and be a thing or if it's just gonna be a fad. Well, my answer to that is one picture. And I'll post it right now. This is us addicted to our phones. A little tiny device that, put, that you put in your pocket and our next generation is growing up where they are 100% addicted to the phone. Now with VR, the immersion that you get with the phone and the interaction and the social environment that is created via the phone is just 10X when you put on a VR headset. You can interact with your friends. You can chat with your friends. You can be at a ski lodge and interact with and have a conversation with a friend that's physically across the country. You could be communicating with a friend that moved out to California and the two you can dial into a Swiss chalet up in the mountains and then go skiing and then come back and have hot chocolate within a VR world. That would be an amazing experience where you don't have to travel to your friend and have that relationship and have that experience. You can have that experience in a virtual reality world and the two of you interact. That's an amazing experience. So do I think we are gonna get addicted to VR? The answer is absolutely yes. The only question is how fast, how immersive are, is this world and these worlds going to be? If a World of Warcraft environment comes out in VR where you can progress your character and interact with friends and go on campaigns with friends and have a, a local mission VR is just waiting for the killer app where the game is so interactive and so socially active that you get this experience like no other. It's just a matter of time before that killer app that VR is asking for is they're going to get. And when that killer app comes out, not only are you going to see everybody buying VR headsets, full VR headsets and with haptic gloves and everything else, you're going to see a transition of time going away from TV to internet to cell phones and progressing over to VR. If you want to debate whether or not that's a good thing or a bad thing, leave comments down below. But I believe that that's where we're heading. We're going to head to a world where we will live in a mansion and communicate with our friends at a Swiss chalet and work in an environment that's virtual. The question is, is it going to make us happier? If you want to learn more about virtual reality, I have a course at Step Next Training where we can teach you the ins and outs of what it is, how it's going to interact with social media, how it's going to interact with media in general. Reach out to us at stepnexttraining.com or stepnexttraining at gmail.com. And we will get back to you with what we can offer to you or your business as to how these technologies can interact with your business and how they can progress your business into the future.
you like this video, please leave a like down below. And if you like these kinds of technologies, please subscribe. I have a lot more videos about emerging technologies and future tech. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.